so that they cannot eat. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Club of Doom. Hello. Hello. Good morning. I'm killed. I don't believe it, Lickson. Sometimes I don't believe it myself, Cranston. It's like some hideous nightmare. Any minute I expect to wake up and find I dream the whole thing. Then I see these bars. Why? Why did you do it? I wish I could tell you. You mean you don't know why you killed your wife? No, Cranston, I don't. That's the horrible part about it. I don't even remember telling you. Yet I... I know that I did. Do you remember what you were talking about just before it happened? Yes, I was telling her about having landed the Sherman account. Well, I suppose we're feeling quite elated over it. <laughs> elated isn't the word. I felt as if I could have licked the world. Next thing I knew, Helen was in my arms. Then, yeah. and no getting away from the crash. I murdered my wife. According to Law Blakesley, the state has to prove intent to kill before they can make out a case of first degree murder. That just about kicked me in the electric chair, Cranston. What do you mean? You see, I wanted to kill her. Well, I hope you didn't get a ticket, sweetie. Really. No, Mr. Cranston. But I gotta admit, I was worried, I gotta admit. Talking in front of a jail ain't so healthy. The man tried to make out. Did Blake did tell you anything? I'm afraid it looks pretty bad for him, Margo. But the man, it doesn't make sense. A man like Blake, he just doesn't murder his wife and reason. I just off to show you. You can never tell a guy by his look. Now, think what happened to me this morning. A guy tried to kill me, he tried. Kill you? Oh! Who want to kill you, Stevie? Well, I don't know who he was, Miss Lane, but he sure didn't look like no killer. More like a lawyer he looked, or a businessman, maybe. Tell us what happened, Stevie. Well, it was like this, Mr. Cranston. I picked up this guy in front of the athletic club. The same one you and Commissioner Weston belong to. That's a great attachment. I'll be late for my appointment. Gee, I'm, I'm going as fast as I can when I'm getting a ticket, mister. Well, what do you looking at me like that for? Anything wrong with me? I wasn't looking at you. I was keeping my eyes peeled out for cops. I just think this while you're looking at me through that mirror. Now, look, mister. Hey, let go. What does the guy tell you? You're joking me. You almost wrecked the cab. I... Holy I'm smoke. I'm sorry, driver. I better get out of here. Yeah, I... Well, Mr. Cranston, I never was one to run away from a fight. But the look on this guy's face didn't make me happy. Anyway, he pays me off with a nice fast tip and gets out of the cab. So I just goes to show you, you never know. Well, that's a strange story. Where did you say this man hailed you? Right in front of the athletic club. And boy, he was plenty athletic. <laughs> Yes, that's funny. The light's on Mr. Andrews' office. I'd better see who's in there. Oh, sorry, Mr. Randall. I didn't know you was working late. Yes, I have to catch up on some work. It looks like it might rain. I'd better close the windows if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. I won't be long. I've been getting a lot of rain lately, haven't we? Well, 
I won't be bothering you any longer. I've got to be making the rounds. Mr. Randall, what's the matter? Oh, oh. Mr. Randall, you... You took me! Got a match, mister? Why, yes. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Huh. Hey, what are you telling me? I ain't done nothing. I only asked you for a match. I, I just wanted to... Hey, hey, stick your hands over me. What are you trying to do? What are you going to do with that pain? Yeah, no. No, no, don't, don't. I... Oh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to present our president, Gordon T. Cruzberg. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Friends, this is a big moment in my life, but it wouldn't be fair to let it pass without my giving credit to the man who has been the guiding hand behind our organization. I am referring to the gentleman seated on my right, my partner and best friend, Joe Osborne. Thank you, Gordon. Joe and I have been together for a long time. Oh, look, Dave. You grabbed hold of the We've had our up. Why is he raising it? Down. Well, he's telling Gordon. What are you doing? I don't get it, Cranston. I went to school with these men. We're all members of the same club. All of them prominent, law-abiding citizens. Suddenly they go for Turk. One of them murders his wife. Another kills the night watchman. Third one clubs a hobo to death with his cane. Last night's too, sir. He splits open his partner's skull with a water pitcher. What's gotten into them? Maybe it's an epidemic. <laughs> you can't be more helpful than that, Miss Lane. Margo may have something there, isn't it? Are you serious? An epidemic of murder? Not as fantastic as it sounds. And that's not exactly what I have in mind. Oh, then you have something in mind. Would you let a very much concerned friend in on it? Glad to come to as soon as I get a few more of the facts straight. The facts are clear enough, Cranston. It's the motive for these crimes that's keeping me up nice. You mean the lack of motive, don't you? Yes, that's what I mean. Thank you delivery for you, Commissioner. Oh, thanks. <coughs> yeah, that's probably another headache. No, it's a mistake of that omelette, Commissioner. I did you to that so well in the... <laughs> Wonderful, Margo. Commissioner ought to swear you in as one of his deputies. I don't think he appreciates our sense of humor, Lamar. Mm-hmm. What do you and I'd better take a look at this, thank you. Let me see. Your neck. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a wedding invitation. No. More like an invitation for murder. Since I've been police commissioner, I've gotten exactly 73 letters threatening my life. I'm not going to let this one bother me so much. I've got me, Buffalo, as my best friend, sending you to kill us. Did you say that all of these men were classmates of yours? Yes, I've known them practically all my life. Now I've got to hold them for murder. What makes you so sure they're guilty of murder? Well, what would you call it? I'd call it a plan for murder. A plan in which that warning note you just got may be a key part. What are you talking about? Just this. Four of the most prominent citizens in this town have committed crimes of violence. None of them actually remember committing the crime, yet all of them have a very positive feeling that they wanted to kill their victims. Well, I'm sure of one thing. Those men aren't criminals. They could no more murder anybody than I could. That's exactly what I've been trying to tell you. Uh, yeah. Well, you two will have to excuse me. I think I'm going to take the afternoon off. Go down to the club for a workout. The state beats anything I ever handled. Is this our exit, you, Margo? Bye, Commissioner. Bye, Miss Lane. I don't mind what I said. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye, Commissioner. If I were you, I wouldn't underestimate the importance of that warning note. That's all right, Jamal. I'm taking you home, Margo. Where are you going? To jail. To jail? But you've already seen Blake. One of the clubs with Randall and the others. Oh, in that case, I wish I'd been to home. You gave me a theory, Margo, when you said those crimes may have been an epidemic. Can you think... I think the same as the commissioner does. Those men could no more commit deliberate murder than he could. <laughs> Yeah, 
Have a thought of coming out later on? I'm afraid I'll have to let it go. It's gone too long now. You look worried, Commissioner. I am worried, Joe. If I can throw some light on these things, I'm going to have to send four of my best friends for the electric chair. Yes, I've been reading about it in the papers. What about those murders? They're all such fine men. What seems that, Mr. Day, Commissioner? Ah, yes. Yes, you may as well give me the work. Yeah. Boy, that feels good. Too bad about Mr. Blake and the others. I wonder what made them do it. Yes, you and me both, Joe. Wasn't a nicer, friendlier person than Mr. Randall? He <laughs> always asked about my leg. Then she even offered to take an operation. He was kind to everybody. Yes, he killed the wife, my blessing. Uh huh. So he went to choose one of the others. Oh, big hearted, generous man. You see, Commissioner, I think there's a bit of madness to meet with it. Waiting for a chance to spin out. Don't you think so? Hmm? Oh, yes, uh, yes, Joe. Very interesting. Hello, Winston. Ah, uh, hello, Bob. I told me you were down here in the steam room. Joe, get into the work? I don't know. How. You're doing it, Stanley. Hey, Miss Zero. Well, Weston, I just wanted to ask you if you want to take part in the wrestling matches tonight. The boys are putting on a little exhibition in the gym. Sure. That didn't take my mind off other things, not so pleasant. Oh, yes. I was an awful shock, Commissioner. I still can't believe it. Well, there's no getting away from the side. Well, I suppose you have to do your duty. So why don't you join me for dinner up in my room when you're through? Fine. I don't mind if I do. And, uh, Joe, will you tell the other boys about the matches? And while you're at it, so you you tear them off. All right, Mr. Cannon. Well, uh, just be sure and match me up with someone my size, Joe. <laughs> That's easy to listen. If the gentleman here is just about your work. Yes, you care to take me on, Commissioner? I'll go with me. That's good. I always did want to beat up a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me just how it happened, Commissioner. Horrible, Cranston. Governor and I have done the matter a few seconds. First thing I know, he went limp. I said something to him. He didn't answer. He was dead. Is the coroner in here yet? Yeah. Don't do an autopsy, but it's a waste of time. I I must have strangled. This is important, Commissioner. Tell me where you were and what you did from the time you got with the club until you went on the mat with Cameron. Yes. First thing I did when I got here was to go down to the steam room. Cameron joined me there and asked me if I wanted to take part in the wrestling matches. Then he invited me to have dinner with him in his room. You spent the evening with Cameron until the time you both went down to the gym for the matches, is that right? Yes. That threatening note was out this afternoon, Commissioner. Do you have it with you? Yes, sure it is. I had four stack copies made before I left the office. My men are trying to locate the typewriter on which was written. Have they checked all the machines here at the club? Yes, they not check with anyone. May I hold on to this note? Hmm? Oh, yes, sure. But you're wasting your time, Cranston. I've been at this game too long not to know when I'm licked. Does it sound like you, Commissioner? Fact or fact, I killed Cameron. I know I killed him. What makes you so sure? Because just a few seconds before it happened, I distinctly remember wanting to kill him. I'd have killed anybody I got my hands on. I felt as if I could lick the world. That's exactly how Blakesley described his feelings when he killed his wife. Huh? And the way Randall felt when he strangled the knife Walkman and Susbury when he stood over his partner's skull. All of you had that same feeling. Mm-hmm. Right. They did tell me that. But why, Cranston? What's gotten into us all? I'm not quite ready to answer that question, Commissioner. However it is, it doesn't change things much. I still killed Cameron. Maybe you didn't. What do you mean? Smell this tube of toothpaste, Commissioner. Hmm. Funny order, like burnt almond. Where'd you get it? I picked it up in Cameron's dressing room. He brushed his teeth before he went down to the gym with you, didn't he? Yes, he did. I think you'd better phone the coroner. He might have something of interest to tell you. You didn't kill Cameron. He was poisoned. Hello. Hello. Mr. Cranston? Yes? You know a young lady by the name of Marco Lane? No. Yes, what's the matter? Has anything happened to her? She's been hurt. Where is she? She's in a private hospital. How much farther do we have to go, Shreevy? We're almost there, Mr. Cranston. We're almost. Boy, this is the middle of nowhere if I ever saw it. Are you sure somebody isn't playing a joke on you? Getting you out here in the middle of the night? It's no joke, Shreevy. I phoned Miss Lane's home. She's not there. Sure hope she's all right, I hope. Definitely. 
Well, this is the place, Mr. Cranston. It don't look like no hospital to me. You wait here, Strivy. Okay. But I hope you won't be too long, I hope. This ain't exactly a gay neighborhood. Oh, I just received a similar call telling me you've been hurt. Somebody got a boat out here on purpose. I must get out of here quickly, but... Somebody's outside that window. Yeah. Don't turn around. Caught the glint of a gun. Oh, no. We walked into a trap. And we've got to act as if we didn't see him. It's our only chance. We're perfect targets for the light on. Yeah, I'm Work your way over to that light switch, and I'll walk towards the truck. We'll pretend to be looking around. When I say the word good time, you turn out the light. Well, Margaret, this place is nicely furnished, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is, you know. Well, look at that old grandfather's clock. Interesting looking antique, isn't it? Must be at least a hundred years old. Yes, but it probably keeps good time. He's down there. I'm going after him. Oh, be careful, Lamar. Get him into the car. Mr. Branson. Mr. Branson. In here, Trini. You all right, Margo? Mr. Yes. Branson. I heard shooting. I heard what's going on. Quick, Trudy, let's get out of the cab. Maybe we can still catch him. I heard a car something, but I didn't hang around to see which way it went when that gun started popping. I beat it right in here, I beat it. Oh, there's no point going on a wild goose chase. See what we can find in here. Uh, turn on the light, Margo. Are you all right, Miss Lane? Yes, Trudy. I'm more than a little scared. Not you realize that we might both have been murdered just now? I'm afraid I was the intended victim. I don't... You and Trudy wait for me in the cab, Margo. We'll never look around this place. All right, you might, but please be careful. Our unknown friend didn't part of my coming out of this trap alive. That's an oversight likely to sit him right in the electric chair. Oh, good morning, Margo. I was just on my way out. Have you seen the papers? No, not yet. Oh, listen to me. Police Commissioner Cleared and Cameron Jones. Yes, Margo. Now, for a while, Commissioner Weston was in a very uncomfortable position of having to arrest himself for murder. But he didn't kill Cameron. No, they found traces of cyanide on Cameron's tongue. His toothpaste had been poisoned. He died a few seconds after he got on the man. You know, the man, I don't see the tie-up between what happened to us last night and, and the club killing. A very definite tie-up. Remember the threatening note Commissioner Weston received? Yes. Last night, I found the typewriter on which it was written. I also found a completely equipped chemical laboratory. Yes. And the fellow of the house next door to the one we were almost trapped in. Margot, doesn't it strike you odd that all of these killings were done by members of the same club, all classmates at college? Well, so what does that mean? Only this. Someone is out to get these men. To get anyone who interferes with his plans. The man we're looking for is physically and probably mentally warped. How do you know that? I can't tell you just now, Margot. The shadow has an appointment with a murderer. That's fine, Joe. Now, I'm going my neck a little to the left, eh? Yeah. Ah, that's the spot. Only not quite so hard. Sorry, Mr. Jake. That better? Yeah, that's fine. Hey, you've got a bit much steam on, Joe. Oh, right? Yes, I... I feel a little dizzy, I... I think I've had enough of the cabinet today. Oh, no, you haven't. Not half enough. Why, what are you talking about? I've been waiting a long time to get you into this steam box. Hey, what kind of a joke is this? Open the cabinet and let me out of here. Still don't understand, do you? Take a good look at me. Did you recognize me? What? Why, well, no. Then maybe this will help your memory. At college, they used to call me Acid Raymond. Acid Raymond? The chemistry professor's prize pupil. Yes. None of you recognize me. It's been a long time since the night of the initiation. Oh, well, why didn't you let us know what they came here? That, that whole affair was a terrible accident. A very unfortunate accident. Did you think you could make amends for my broken leg? Did you think your sibling would cure my spinal injury? The doctor told me long ago I could never be cured. Ah, oh, but money that you want. I don't want your money. I want your life, Drake. And the life of every man who was in on that initiation. Now, you must be insane. Maybe I am. He said that spinal injury might affect my mind. But I don't think it has. My mind has never been clear. I don't think it's hot enough for you in that drink. Well, I'll fix that. A joke. 
Listen to me, I... Why do you think I took this job? Not for the glory of rubbing your thick hides? No. Every member of this club who was in on that initiation will pay with his life. Only you won't go the way the others will. You were the ringleader of the Hazen. I've got a special way to take care of you. You're crazy, Joe. You'll burn for this. I'll burn. That's a good one. You'll burn, Drake. You'll roast alive in that steam box. Oh, no, he won't. That's his Raymond. Who's that? <laughs> the the thief. He went off by itself. No, it didn't, Raymond. The saddle turned it off. Oh, thank heaven. Just about it, Mr. Drake. Leave this room. I'll deal with that, Raymond. You won't get out of this room alive. Quickly, Mr. Drake. Out that door. Now, Joe Raymond. Who are you? The saddle. Saddle? What do you want with me? Confession of your crime. You can't prove anything. Nobody can. They did the killing. You can't get away from that. You convicted yourself, Joe Raymond. Confess that you injected those club members with a powerful drug while they're in the steam cabinet. A drug that gave them first a terrific physical energy and caused them to commit murder. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. I did it. Killing them off with doing it. I wanted to pick one against the other, have them murder each other, kill their wives, everything they love. The school I majored in chemistry. I made good use of that knowledge. They never suspected when I rubbed the backs of their necks what I was massaging into their system. You chose the wrong path, Joe Raymond. You tried to wipe out the accidental wrong that was done to you with crime, but you can't get away with it. Oh, yes, I can. Because you won't live to tell any tale, Shadow. There, Shadow. I've locked you in. I'm going to open all the steam valves, Shadow. The heat will take the skin right off your body. <laughs> Well, Margo, luckily, Dre came back to the police. We thought Joe Raymond found a nice getaway. But with all that steam, how did the shadow escape so the pit? The steam rises. By hugging the floor, it was possible to remain conscious for a good while. The police came none too soon. Come on. What did the killer use? The drugs, Margo. Powerful mental and muscular excitement based in the case of Bob. South American Indians used it to excite them in battle. But if Raymond wanted to get rid of Tom, how did he poison the pizza? Why didn't he just let the drug take its natural effect on to Miss McGuffey and let him kill Cameron during the wrestling match? He wasn't taking any chances. He knew the commissioner had unusually strong powers of self-control. He doubted that whether the drug even as powerful as that one would make Weston commit murder. You know, Lamar, I still can't figure out how this trail of crime pointed to Joe Raymond. Footprints, Margaret. Footprints of a man who lived. I found them outside that window last night. A similar print around the back of the adjoining house. Oh, my. He leaves the house next door as a cat. Yes. The wrong to offend it, was aware. Raymond had the keys. He's become a homicidal maniac, Margot. He became... based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plots are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadows' daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. This is Ken Roberts saying, keep the home fires burning with blue coal. This is Ken Roberts saying, keep the home fires burning with blue coal. <laughs>